All right, I don't even know what to title this video. This is such a bizarre story, but um, let's, let's see if I get this straight and then I'll talk about what we're gonna do here. So here's the story. This car is a, I believe it's a 2014 uh, Hyundai Santa Fe and it belongs to my girlfriend Vicky's hairdresser. So while getting her hair done, the uh, hairdresser, Mary, tells Vicky that she had this horrible day because her car died. And the car dies right across the street from a Meineke. Uh, for those of you guys that aren't familiar, Meineke is a muffler shop, at least as far as I know, because it gets a little weirder from here. When's the last time I've taken my car in for service, right? So uh, last I checked, Meineke was just a muffler shop where you just go to get a discount muffler put on your car. So her car uh, apparently dies in spectacular fashion with this big puff of black smoke, oil everywhere, uh, all the drama and everything. And it's right across from this Meineke muffler shop. So the guys at Meineke uh, apparently push it over to the shop or something like that. And one of the guys at Meineke looks at her car and gives a diagnosis. And here it is. Okay, now this isn't directly from the guy. This is from the hairdresser, Mary. But what she said, the guy at Meineke diagnosed, is that some of the bolts backed out of the camshaft in the car. And when one of the bolts backed out, it caught on the engine block or something like that. And as a result, froze the camshaft, bent the hell out of the bolt, but froze the camshaft. And then with this being an interference engine, the intake valve was struck by a piston, bending the intake valve. Diagnosis was that she really needs a new engine or uh, an engine rebuild at worst and a cylinder head job at best. So this is from the guy at Meineke. So obviously Vicky says, oh, well, you know what? You should have Matt look at it. Um, he does this stuff all the time. So I offered to go over to the Meineke, but just in the event that maybe they were correct, obviously I want to be able to do a leak down test. I'm not real comfortable doing a compression test if they are even remotely correct about this because I don't want to rotate the engine, right? So I offered if they towed the car over, I would take a look and give them my own diagnosis. And that is exactly what they did. So the car is here. Let's look at the condition that they left the car for me in here. So this is exactly how the car arrived to me. Also with uh, this, a big box of just bolts and parts and stuff. Um, some of these not even sure what's going on. But uh, anyway, so here's the deal. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention that the, um, the way Mary described it, that one of the bolts broke through or shot through or damaged the engine block somehow and put a hole in it, which, of course, I was skeptical about. But uh, looking at the valve cover here, you can see that it's just the plastic valve cover that was damaged over this. And uh, as a matter of fact, I will admit, if we look here... We can see we've got dual overhead cam engine and on the intake, we do have where it looks like the phaser uh, did come apart here and uh, for the variable valve timing. And there may be some validity to this guy's story. I, I do have to admit, it does look very much like, I, I don't know if this guy took this apart or whether he found it this way. I'm sure he just found it this way because it matches with his diagnosis. But uh, he was also so specific that there is a bent intake valve as well. So let's, let's look at the parts that we have and see if we can put something together here that substantiates this. And then, of course, we're going to do our own testing to see what is wrong with this engine. But also, I have been given another challenge. The other challenge is, of course, they're not really sure what they're going to do with the car if there is a major engine problem here. Uh, I will say it's kind of looking like that just 
off the surface, but if I do find that this car needs a major engine repair, well, they're not really sure what plan they're going to take, but they live about 20 miles away. So they did ask if there was any way I would be able to put the engine back together enough that they could drive the car 20 miles to where they have this uh, storage facility or something and they were just gonna hang on to the car until further notice. I believe that it, it wouldn't be accessible by tow truck or something like that, but that's kind of the plan here. So we not only need to assess what the damage is here and everything, but I need to get the car operational where they're okay driving it for some time. So let's take a look at what we've got in our parts box. So actually, you would be surprised how often this happens, that I look at cars after a um, mechanic or another person diagnosed it or was looking at it or something, and all I get is just this. Um, oh, this is not good. These look like these may be little uh, locks for the variable valve timing that probably flung out or something like that. Should be several more of these, yeah. That's what they look like is what my guess is. So putting this back together may be a little bit more of a challenge, but uh, kind of interesting, you see the spark plugs removed, which is indicating to me the guy probably did do a compression or a leak down test. So, you know, I, I oh, look at this. All right, well, I have to hand it to this guy. You know, I, I normally um, shouldn't jump to conclusions uh, that, you know, the guy is from Meineke, a muffler shop, but it is kind of adding up right now that this guy may be on to something. So let's go ahead and just go from a clean slate, not make any assumptions, and just treat this as if we didn't have a background on it. So I know I'm always cynical of professional mechanics and everything, but uh, to, to be honest with you, you got to remember, I only usually get the ones where they misdiagnosed it. You got to keep that in mind. There are many, many, many times, and actually more often than not, it's from a dealer where people bring the car to me for second opinion or something, or maybe just to do the work that the dealer diagnosed or whatever. And uh, I do find that usually the dealer is by far, actually, more accurate in their diagnoses. But do keep that in mind that when you're watching this channel, it's going to kind of give you the impression that every single mechanic out there is just completely incompetent. And actually, it's not like that at all. I'm just getting the ones where people have tried three or four times to get the car fixed and the mechanic can't figure it out. That's what we get on this channel a lot. This um, may, may actually be a correct call. So what I want to do, the first thing, I want to turn this engine over and see if there's any chance that we've got obstruction with the engine, that something's locked up, timing chain may have bunched up, stuff like that. So let me see what I can do here. All right, well, lucky for me, I kind of like this design. There is a access port through the sidewall to reach the crankshaft bolt. So I can get it a long extension and I can fit a socket right on there. There it goes. I can actually go through the wheel, through the spaces on the spokes of the wheel. And there it is. And I can rotate this engine now. And it does rotate. All right, rotating the engine, we can see that we uh, don't seem to have any binding or anything. I'm gonna rotate this engine 720 degrees just to be sure let's look over here for any damage on camshaft lobes or anything i will tell you this engine rotates perfectly fine there is no question in my mind that we can start this car and the engine's going to run i don't see any reason it wouldn't unless it's just way, way out of time or something as a result of what happened, maybe jump some teeth on timing chain. I think what we'll do, just to be safe, let me go ahead and just try rotating this engine over by just uh, running the starter. Yeah, we may actually not be in as bad of shape as what it seemed. Start, it says start right here. I need to get that relay out. All right, there is no relay map on here. So, let's see. 
Um, let me get a test light, see if I can map this out real quick. Yeah, there's power there. That's going to be load side. Yep, I can definitely do this. All right, let me get a jumper wire. Oh, yeah, totally rotates. Not, not crazy about the, that weird compression sound, even with the spark plugs missing, though. All right, we'll give you a look there. Yeah, there's, there's something. I, I got to tell you, I got to hand it to this Meineke guy just on that. I'm going to say this guy called it exactly as it happened. Um, so, man, I hope he's watching. Good for you, man. Of course, he would say the same about me being a do-it-yourselfer, right? So I got to respect that. But uh, th this dude, um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to look up. Mine key may not be what I, what I thought it was, but I didn't think they did anything under the hood. Uh, and it was just mufflers. But um, I think this guy made a good call. So what we need to do now, we got a couple ways we can go. I was originally upset at him just leaving me a big old box of parts and everything, but actually he kind of made things easier for me and a lot quicker. I think we, because we can crank the engine like that, we certainly could do compression test, but at the same time, we, we could also just go right to a leak down test because I'm, I'm actually right on board with this guy. I think we got a compression loss here. So... Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do a leak down test because we've got easy access to the crankshaft. I can turn the engine over by hand. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right. Some of you guys are wondering why I'm not using my new Pico scope from C5 Diag who uh, gave me that just free two channel Pico scope. And it's because, you know, I, I don't want to start doing too much with the tools that I know most of my viewers don't have. It would be fun to do. We already did a relative compression test using uh, his Pico scope. And the other thing is that I really do believe that it's not a matter of if there's a compression loss, but where there is compression loss. So of course the leak down test is really the only way that we're gonna be able to do this without making a huge dissection here. So let's get some compressed air here. Uh, first thing I wanna do, make sure that my Ratchet is off of the crankshaft so we don't rotate the engine if we happen to be at uh, a compression stroke here. Put some air in there. And now I can rotate the engine. All right, you guys who follow the channel know I do my tests a lot different. I don't start off at top dead center compression. I like to do mine from the bottom of the compression stroke so I get the whole cylinder not so much a factor for this diagnosis. This is going to be top end, most likely. Let's rotate that engine. And let's see. Oh, right there. You can see we are at the bottom of the compression stroke. Both valves closed. We have no leak down. That is a healthy cylinder right there. Yeah, for sure. All right. So that cylinder's fine. All right, let's go over to the next cylinder. I'm not sure how these are numbered on Hyundai. I, I actually, now I think about it, have I ever seen a Hyundai before? I don't think, I, I think this is the first time I've ever had a Hyundai in here. Let's go ahead and put that one on and let's rotate the engine towards compression. Okay, coming around to the next cylinder and yeah, we can see that also really healthy. I don't know how many miles are on this car, but this engine, <laughs> This is a shame if this engine is blown because that is, that is exceptional compression. So I'm kind of hopeful right now that when we go to this third cylinder that it also has really good compression and this is nothing more than just the timing coming apart and, and that we don't have engine damage. That would be amazing if that's the case. So yeah, let's um, get back over here. We got one more cylinder left to check. And if this one measures good, well, first of all, I don't think it will. I could tell just by the sound that it won't. But then again, maybe that's something with the timing being off possibly. If this is, if this is just timing, I will be so excited. All right, again, let me make sure that ratchet is removed off the crankshaft just in case. Let's go ahead and connect that up. And let's go towards compression. 
All right, I'm right at the bottom of the compression stroke, and as I pass through, you'll see I move it a little bit, just, just to underneath the moderate, and then as I continue, I can hold it there. But if I go any further past that, let's go a little bit more, and you see it just, that's all that I get. Um, it, it loses it at the top of the stroke. Try that one more time. Go a little bit slowly. Yeah, that's as much as I can get. And as I keep rotating, it, that's the highest it goes. So we definitely have a leakage. You can hear the leakage is past the intake. So yeah, um, I'm going to say there's a bent intake valve on that cylinder. All right, well, that is definitely a shame. I was really kind of getting excited at the potential of giving some good news for a minute there. Uh, one of the things I do want to do is look and make sure that there isn't anything like the camshaft twisted or popped uh, out of the bearings or anything like that, and it didn't. That's, that's definitely a valve issue. Oh, that sucks, but what I need to do is get this thing back together, and we're going to try to run it. So let's see here. We have uh, right here we've got one of those little locks in there, so I need to feed those in first, I believe. And it looks like those will slip just uh, right into the grooves here. I can reach this one. There it is, just like that. Just set that in. Um, that one's already there, so not all of them came out. Need to rotate the engine around to reach the rest of those. And my guess is some of these probably fell out and went right down the timing chain cover and probably into the oil pan. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the mechanic did say one of the bolts he believed did drop down to the oil pan. I'm actually not worried about that. The oil pump is going to have a screen on it where it's, it's not going to suck up a bolt. Um, let me just take a look here. Oh yeah, definitely a straight shot right to the oil pan, no doubt. So I, I'm not worried about it binding up the timing chain or anything like that. Uh, let's see, we've got one more peg here. Yeah, so it looks like one of these did, did ultimately find its way down to the oil pan, but again, I'm really not worried about that. As far as I'm concerned, this engine's trashed. Whatever we get out of it will be a miracle. All right, so now we have to retain those in with this retainer cap. And of course, uh, now I gotta find bolts for that. They're in the box somewhere, I hope. All right, looks like I only have a couple of bolts for it, so I'll have to find some different ones. Let's, let's see here. We need to line this, these bolt holes up and they will not line up, but that's because I need to rotate the cam just a hair. And let's see, it, it definitely doesn't look like they line up. Let me just try real quick now. That didn't, that's just off a little bit. Um, need to rotate that. All right, that looks about like a, almost like a 13 or 14. Let me try a 14. Oh, how about that? And yeah, we can rotate it just enough that now I can feel it threading in perfect. So let me go get that cap. Ah, I just noticed there's uh, quite a bend in the retainer ring here. Yeah, let me put that in a vise, see if I can flatten that out in the vise. Well, a little bit better there, but man, this, this metal is super strong. The amount of force it must have required to bend this is kind of impressive. All right, there's bolt hole there. Feed that through. See if I can get my wrench on here. Yep, just a bit. And thread these bolts in. All right. All right, I'm thinking a good idea to put a little bit of Loctite onto these bolts. Make sure this doesn't happen again. All right, got a couple more of those to do. And, you know, quite honestly, I mean, th there's really nothing 
special here. I think a lot of people are not familiar with the variable valve timing, but other than that, I mean, this is just bolting stuff together and just figuring out which bolts go where. So I think what we're going to do just to save some time for the video and also expedite my process here, because uh, quite honestly, this car is taking up Vicky's parking space in the garage. So I promised her that I would get this thing moving as quick as possible. So I'm just going to put this back together and we'll take a listen to it when I go ahead and start it up. I almost forgot we cannot reuse the valve cover because it got damaged by whatever happened there. That's going to let oil fling around everywhere. So that is not going to allow the car to be drivable even with the dead cylinder. So I talked to the owners about it and they went to the Hyundai dealer and they got a new valve cover. So we will install that. All right, just finishing up here and occurred to me that maybe you guys had a few questions about the strategy here. Like what is the point on an engine that is kind of blown? Well, the thing is, is that I am positive this engine is going to run even with the dead cylinder. And the idea is, you know, I don't know what their plan or situation is and I don't really care, but I have seen cars drive for like years with dead cylinders and maybe they can just drive this to the ground until it blows up and and then they know they need a new engine anyway so you know if they uh for whatever the investment is to get this thing going maybe they get some more time out of it and the other thing is how do i know that this all isn't for naught and this engine isn't going to run well i guess that's possible but the thing is is that i don't see any indication that it won't it turns over fine. It looks like the timing's correct. There is compression in the other cylinders. So there's, there's just no reason to think that this car will not run as far as I'm concerned. So I'm, I'm actually really not too worried about it. I, I don't think it's going to run great. And remember, I don't need to get this thing to go across the country. I need to get this thing as they requested to go 20 miles. That's it. And I am confident that I can do that. The truth is this thing stopped becoming fun for me when I diagnosed what the condition is. And it was uh, definitely more fun, especially with that crazy story before that I certainly didn't think was going to pan out. But at this point, I am just basically doing a job that I was requested to do by the person who does my girlfriend's hair. So I want her to be happy. There is one other thing that I was thinking, and that is uh, I'll have to look and see what the control mechanism is for misfire as far as the fuel injector goes. Obviously, I'm tempted to disable a fuel injector on that cylinder, so don't keep dumping fuel into that cylinder. But on a car of this year, I expect fully that it will automatically disable fuel injector on a detected cylinder misfire. So I'll have to look that up to be sure, but I'll just finish up these connections here and we should be good to go. All right, well, this engine is uh, gas direct injection, so I can't do my little fuel injector idea, but I did end up with three extra bolts that I have absolutely no idea where these go. So my interpretation is that I did this more efficiently than the engineers did. Let's give it a go. Prime up the pump a couple of times. Oh, wow. So you can hear that dead cylinder. Yeah, you can definitely hear the dead cylinder. But you know what? It seems to run. All right, that was an interesting one, mission completed. So I did drive the car around a little bit. I will tell you it drives like it has five cylinders pretty much. So uh, a little bit sluggish coming off of stop signs, uh, certainly isn't gonna win any street races for sure. But you know what, it gets around pretty, pretty decently. So um, again, I don't know what their plans are. I don't really care, but they can go ahead and drive this thing into the ground. And when they're ready for a new engine, they can certainly contact me. But that was kind of a fun one. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found this very entertaining. We will see you next time.